Oh. Oh no. I just killed someone. I'm a monster. These men have had years of training with weaponry and combat. I'd better avoid them at all costs and find alternate ways to pass them. Hello and welcome to Press A to Learn, a show that if you rearrange the name of it, turns into more of a condescending instruction from a game. Learn to press A, scrub. Mind you, that's essentially what quick time events are, right? Right? Man, I hate quick time events. I don't even know why I named the show after them. You should call this thing something else like, the super amazing show of wondrous learning and fun and stuff. I don't know, it doesn't have the same ring to it, does it? Anyway, I'm Matt, and today we're going to look into how gameplay connects with narrative and delve into the topic of ludonarrative dissonance and what it actually is. We've touched on the subject of narratology and ludology in the previous episode, What is a Game? If you haven't seen it, click on the annotation here. In this episode, we did a quick sum up of what they were and how they affected games individually. However, in this episode, we're going to explore more into the marriage of these two ideals, finding ways for developers to avoid ludonarrative dissonance. Now, to create a game with the perfect balance of gameplay and narrative is a very tricky thing. More often than not, these two elements are in conflict with one another. Games with awesome gameplay sometimes not delivering too much of a story, and story-based games often being minimalist with the gameplay. That's not to say that they necessarily need to be equal. I wouldn't want a super deep story revolving around the game Tetris. Tetris works well as it is, but for the game with the ambition to push both gameplay and narrative to the fullest, it's not an easy task, and one that needs thoroughness in the design from the very first concept of the idea. Before we go on, let's quickly go over what ludonarrative dissonance actually is. It's a term that describes when gameplay and narrative contradict each other, like when a game tries to convey an idea through the plot, and plays completely different in the gameplay. An example from an old game can be found in Metroid for the NES. This game gives you a gun that you need to pick certain ammo up for, and conveniently, this ammo is dotted around the strange alien world being dropped by enemies and found around the base. When you upgrade to the missile, suddenly there's a lot of missiles dotted around too. From the ludic side, this makes total sense. The player needs ammo to progress. It's become normal and not really argued with to have convenient ammo and health around the level design. However, from the narratological side of why, there's somewhat no reason why these creatures would be holding ammo for your specific guns. It's never really questioned in the game, and there are no real clear answers to this strange anomaly. Another example is, and spoiler warning for Final Fantasy VII, is Eris' death. In terms of plot, this is a key point in the story, and one of the most demonising moments for the main antagonist, Sephiroth. However, from a ludic point of view, you know, the game rules and mechanics, this makes no sense as the characters have been hit with way worse than a sword through the abdomen, and have been resurrected several times using Phoenix Downs, the game's resurrection item. Let's try a more modern title, one that's been under the ludonarrative dissonance debate spotlight for a while, Tomb Raider. In this game, you see the main protagonist struggling to survive. Shooting and putting down a deer, you see Lara really struggle with what she has to do. Not long after, whilst defending herself, she kills a man and nearly breaks down. In the narrative, this is because she's scared. She's never had to do anything like this in her whole life. However, the gameplay has you performing epic headshots with your bow and Lara slaughtering hundreds of people on this island, with the game even rewarding you for how well you kill them. It does nothing to portray the character and the narrative laid before you, and breaks a link between the story and the gameplay. One of the main problems is that the game tries to deliver a hard-hitting narrative through non-playable sections, forcing you to watch the character development through the character's acting. All of this would be good if you were watching cutscene after cutscene to get the story, i.e. if it was a film. However, the game drops you in a typical third-person shooter, in which the character performs epic feats of killing with awesome acrobatics. When I play this game, it feels like I'm playing something like Halo, in which there aren't enough enemies to fill up with the bullets that I have. It makes me feel powerful whilst performing these feats. 
The difference is, instead of being the universe's greatest, bestest elite soldier, I'm meant to be a lone woman trapped against the odds of a near entire army. Sure, if the game's set up for an epically strong and fierce woman who can kill anything at sight, then give me awesome third person action and reward me for killing. If you set up the game to portray a woman forced to do what it takes to survive, make me struggle. Trying to make the protagonist have very human flaws in a character and then having gameplay that makes her almost overpowered is very jarring. Make me use my wits to survive, find alternate ways to pass my enemies, use the environment to do my killing, make each and every person I'm forced to kill feel like a real struggle. I'll admit that it would set up for less action in terms of gameplay, but it will make for a more interesting game to say the least, with more character and some real tense moments. Think of this War of Mine style survival, where combat is best avoided for the main aim of survival, and plays the character of Lara from the cutscenes. Wouldn't that make for a more fitting game for the character? By the way, if you haven't heard anything about the game This War of Mine, check out the review we did on our channel. Anyway, back to the show. <coughs> Where was I? Ah yes. A game that links both gameplay and narrative together well is Alien Isolation. In this game, the protagonist, Amanda Ripley, is a woman determined to uncover what happened to her missing mother. In the narrative, she is not a fighter. She does not know martial arts, that I think. And when she gets a gun, it proves more troublesome than it's worth to use. Here, you play a character that can't kill endless waves of enemies with nothing but her fists and a gun. So in the gameplay, you must find alternate ways to get by. You must sneak. You must use your ears. You use your gadgets. You use the environment around you. All of this helps convey how powerless your character is in terms of brute strength, and forces you to use your wit and cunning to survive. Games don't necessarily have to have the most complicated gameplay in the world either. Look at Papers, Please. This game centres around the oppression of your character, how the government of the game has you trapped in this job with fear of jail and deportation of your family from failure of your job, and there are much more in terms of punishment. This is portrayed perfectly in the gameplay, which plays very much like a job. With the player using the guidelines book, assessing paperwork and stamping approved or denied before moving on to the next person, it's simple but very effective in immersing you in the narrative when playing the game. I feel as though the main problem with games, particularly AAA games, is that when creating the gameplay, AAA developers are generally trying to make the game as fun as they can. What I mean by this is, most developers are too scared to make a game that isn't constantly moving forward at a fast rate with amazing uber graphics. The main focus leans on getting sales through the tried and tested style of games, and not trying something new. Games are still trying to figure itself out. There is no set template to how a game should play, and there are new and interesting style games still being discovered. There isn't an instant good formula that, if followed, would create a perfect game. This is where developers need to experiment and push for new ways to link gameplay and narrative. If we do, we'll create games that are not only fun to play, but will enrich us with truly deep stories reinforced by none other than you, the player. Do I think games like Tomb Raider are bad? No. I think they're fun to play with many hours of enjoyment to be had. Do I think that there could be more from games like Tomb Raider? Absolutely. That's all we have time for today. If you like this episode of Press A to Learn, then please hit the like button and share this video. You have no idea how much it helps. Also, it really helps out if you subscribe to this channel too. If you like this sort of video and think you'll enjoy more, as well as other game related content, then please subscribe. I'll give you a free hug. Come on. Come on, there you go.